what needs to be done? What do we need to do to make sure that history does not repeat itself in Zimbabwe? We must have political reforms in the country to ensure free, fair, and credible elections. We must understand how rigging is done. That's why Professor Moyo's presentation is very important. Understand the points, the areas where rigging is done, and then come up with a mechanism to undo it so that we can have free, fair, and credible elections. And some of the political reforms might require constitutional amendments. You know, it's very cynical. ZANU-PF is very cynical. We've been calling for political reform, political reforms. They're doing the opposite. They're creating political reforms to safeguard rigging. They're carrying out political reforms to ensure that rigging is protected. No, we need the reverse. We need political reforms to enable and allow free, fair, and credible elections not constitutional amendments to enable and safeguard rigging of elections. We have a challenge. The opposite is being done. What we want, the opposite is being done. What do we mean by political reforms? Reforms to improve democracy. Reforms to deepen democracy. Reforms to expand the democratic space so that we can have free, fair, transparent, and credible elections. We want professionalism, transparency, integrity and independence in the management of our elections. These reforms, we must work towards them before 2023 so that we can, afford, we can avoid history repeating itself in 2023. All stakeholders must agree and implement this. Implementation is the problem. It's one thing to have a law or have a rule. Let's make sure it is implemented so that we can guarantee and disputed poll outcomes. So we can resolve the perennial polarization due to stolen or rigged elections. We must overhaul ZEC. The structure of ZEC must change. The nature of appointment of members must change. The independence of ZEC must be guaranteed. Let us copy South Africa. Let us look at IEC in South Africa. Let us professionalize ZEC and pick up lessons from South Africa's IEC. The appointment of the ZEC chairperson must not be done by the president. Munangagwa must not appoint ZEC chairperson. We must overhaul the entire electoral system. For example, why don't you have 100% PR? All of them, Senate and Parliament, PR. And guess what? The big parties like MDC Alliance and ZANU-PF might not like this one because big parties are the beneficiaries of lack of PR. But PR is good for democracy. This is why, again, a major emphasis in my presentation is this struggle in Zimbabwe must be owned by civic society. This struggle in Zimbabwe must be owned by ordinary people because sometimes the political parties have vested interests. So it will take civic society to say, we want 50-50 gender parity. We want 100% PR, civil society, the women, the youth are the ones who can drive this agenda. And you might have to change the constitution to get 50-50 gender parity. Election management system, transparent limitation exercise, this must happen if we're going to avoid history repeating itself. Media reforms, access to media, campaigns, election environment, those five stages that Professor Moyo spoke about, they require effective reforms. They require media reforms. They require political reforms. And by the way, you might need constitutional amendments to make this happen, or you might just need an ordinary act of parliament. Go figure it out, people of Zimbabwe. But we need reforms to make sure our elections are free, fair, and credible, to make sure that history does not repeat itself. Prof, <laughs> Professor Mutambara. Okay. Uh, yes, okay. You, it's, I'm, I'm still on time. I'm still you, on time. You, you people power. We, we must make sure that we use people power in addition to lawfare. We can't just stick to the law. We must seek to also ensure that the route and destination of our election results are guaranteed and the fidelity of our results. Okay. 
We must defend the vote. We must disband OZEC. We must make sure that we identify the rigging enablers, individuals and institutions, and also make sure that we deploy agents. Professor Moy has spoken about this. 98, 985 wards, 210 constituencies, 10 provinces. We must make sure we attend to the institutionalized rigging, which is done by SEC. What we need to do in summary, massive voter registration, massive voting, and number three, defending the vote. There's no point in registering to vote if you don't vote. There's no point in voting unless you can defend the vote. Heavy voter registration, massive turnout will make it difficult to rig elections. Okay, and uh, these are the strategies we must we must carry out. But civil society must be the center of this. And I must emphasize, Chris, this one here: the limitations of law. Don't get carried away by going to court. In the liberation struggle, there was only one case: the Mazimba Muto versus Lundenberg. 1969, which went up to the Privy Council, which was challenging the legality of UDI, the legality of Ian Smith. The judges in Zimbabwe said Smith was legal. The Privy Council said Smith was illegal, but the regime ignored it. Thereafter, the freedom fighters never went to court to ask for votes, never went to court to ask for, ask for justice. In South Africa, legal action against apartheid in apartheid courts. You can't do that. Now, ED and ZANU PF have to decide. Are they keen to create Smith and apartheid courts in Zimbabwe? Are they keen to create illegitimate courts, illegal courts in Zimbabwe? If they do that, we are not coming to your illegal courts for justice. We will not go to court when you have illegal courts and illegitimate courts. We will learn from Zin, Zipra and Zanla forces. They did not go to court to ask for the vote from Ian Smith. Tongo Gara and Chitepo, Nikita Mangena and Jason Ziapa Paboyo did not go to court to ask for the vote from Ian Smith. The MK and Apla fighters in South Africa, Chris Hani and Joe Slovo did not go to court to ask for freedom. So if the courts in Zimbabwe are illegitimate, if the courts in Zimbabwe are illegal, we are not coming there. The law, has its limitations. I don't know where we're going to go. And I'm not going to tell you where we're going to go, but definitely we're not going to go to the courts which are illegitimate. So we need to make a decision as ZANU PF and ED whether we're going to make our courts illegal. All these points have been made. We must stop two thirds majority. We must improve the quality of our candidates, technical competence, proven capabilities, demonstrable commitment, ethical leadership strategic thinking, a track record of measurable achievements. The opposition must have credible candidates for president and for parliament. Let us spend some time in choosing our candidates. As we conclude, here's the question. Zimbabwe can be made ready for 2023. History does not have to repeat itself. Elections can solve the national questions. However, there's a caveat. Only if a number of things are done in the next two years. Is history about to repeat itself? Not necessarily. If we are wrong, it won't repeat itself. We must resolve the dilemma. It is pivotal for civil society to play its role. There's been a discussion about an electoral Sabbath, avoiding elections, uh, cancellation elections in favor of national reforms. Ideal, preferred path, but unrealistic. It's pie in the sky. It's unrealistic to say you're going to cancel elections and have a national transitional authority. In the context of a military junta, in the context of these amendments, in the context of an overconfident junta, the MDCA and MDC alliances can only be settled by national election. So even the opposition need the national elections. So I want to be very clear on the NTA. Very nice idea but totally unattainable. There will be no suspension of elections in 2023. There will be no electoral Sabbath to work on national reforms in Zimbabwe. It will not happen. There will be no national transition authority in Zimbabwe. A constitutional change is required to do that. Do you expect this junta to give you that change? 
not possible. National polarization, divided opposition. And also the nature of the NTA, if it is going to be people who are not politicians, I, 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 I have strong views that even the opposition won't accept it, but they speak for themselves. So NTA is desirable, but pie in the sky, not feasible. I want to make sure I'm very clear on this so we can do the right things about 2023. Let us make sure we have a transparent election management system. Make sure we defend the vote. Make sure we have political reforms. Make sure we register to vote and then vote and defend the vote. The opposition must understand the strategic value of unity. They must understand the importance of high caliber candidates. And this is the end. Lawfare, yes, let us go to court, but we must understand the limitations of the court. Please, corporate lawyers, tell us the limitations of the law. You cannot go to the oppressor's law firm the oppressors courts to ask for justice. Zanla and Zipra fighters did not do that. MK and Apla fighters did not do. How dare you think you can do it if this regime has gone wrong? If this regime now wants an illegal government and an illegal court system, we won't go to that court. We must deploy people power. We must work on political reforms. Women, young people must be the center for our discussion. We must have an ecosystem approach. We must be our own liberators. How? Massive voter registration. How? Massive voting. How? By defending the vote. We the people, we the people must become the electoral revolution we seek to see in 2023. I thank you so very much.